Cliff DTV, we back again, man. Big we homie, back. what's up? We back, man. Just working hard, man. Ain't been to sleep yet, but you know, got to stay up for my boy Spliff D. Man, there you go. There we go. There we go. Man, man, check this out, man. They had they had a they had a Halloween costume party in Los Angeles, man. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, yesterday. Well, the day before yesterday. Oh, a couple of days ago. All right. Diddy's Diddy's sons, all three of them, Christian, Quincy, and Justin attended. It. Right. Uh, Ray J also attended this Halloween party. Also, I'm assuming Ray J was talking slick about their father. And now, I, and I feel like uh, you know the three sons didn't appreciate the slick talk, right? So during a during this Halloween costume party, which is full of a list celebrities in Los Angeles, right? The three sons decided to try to jump Ray J. Damn! All right, so and guess who broke it up? Chris who broke Brown. It up? Chris Brown broke it up. Chris Brown broke it up. Because, you know, him and Chris Brown, both bloods. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure that type of politics playing a role in it. Now, so let me let me ask you this, big homie. Like, you got the three sons, man, Christian, Justin, and, and Quincy. Right. They, they, now, they grew up a privileged lifestyle. Now, we know, we know uh, 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 J- Justin, you know, he think he'll, that, that's the one that's rapping right now, right? I think that's Christian. That's Christian. Yeah. Okay. Who well, with the one that's making the videos and rapping? It, I know he I, feel like he. I feel. You know, I know he feel like he's a t- tough guy. But you know, you gotta do your homework before you start messing with certain people. For sure. For sure. For sure. So I say this, right? You know, Diddy might have a lot of weird, zesty ways, but he not no pushover. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like I said, he a tough cake toucher. You feel me? Like he be on some gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? So like, uh, this just go back to what I was saying previously. I seen Diddy in Vegas with Ray J, Diddy, and F. Gary Gray in Vegas on a, on some weird activity. You feel me? So I'm, I'm going to give you an exclusive right here. So News Nation hits me up to do an interview, right? Okay. They refuse to pay me any money, and they keep trying to say that I was Diddy Bodyguard. I was never his bodyguard. I ended up at his events because of me being a bodyguard for somebody else. News Nation hits me up. I ended up turning down the interview. So when I turned it down, they go and get Ray J. But I had already told them that Ray J is somebody who always party with him. So they go get Ray J for the interview. That right there let me know that it's really some type of conspiracy going on. So then when Ray J doing the interview, you know, he throwing shade, but then he trying to speak positively about dude, about Combs. So that right there lets me know that they probably paid him some money. And he trying to get out in front of this situation because he, just like Orlando Brown said, like, I know you want some of that footage too. And I know he on some of that footage as well. So did he ain't no tough. He ain't no, he ain't no pushover, bro. So like his son's going to be just like him. Cause you know, me and his son, the one with the waves, wearing the lip gloss all the time, dancing <laughs> and rapping, you feel me? One yeah. day, he come on the internet saying he GDK. I remember that. Well, how is you GDK, bro? You feel me? You you you, you couldn't have possibly be doing anything. You know what I'm saying? So that they just getting that from him, bro. You feel me? Then at the same time, they trying to hold their pop's name down. You feel me? So... I'm not surprised at all. You know, I've been picking on them for years. Like, they don't never respond to me. Like, they told somebody I did an interview with that I think I'm tough and all this type of stuff, but how come they don't respond to me? I actually got a song about to come out dissing them. So, you know, I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. And the closer we get to Diddy trial, 
we're going to see a lot of this. You feel me? You know, I expect people to turn up dead as well. So just keep that in mind. Wow. Dude, uh, so do you feel like the sons inherited Diddy's drunken with power? For sure, absolutely, because they be at all the parties. Like Since they've been old enough, they've been at all the parties. You feel me? They was in handcuffs as well. So when, when the raid went on, and, and peep this, when he got raided, Homeland Security was involved, and they didn't tell the raiding officers whose house they were going to go raid because they know it's other co-conspirators and other powerful people who've been coming to them parties, protecting him and helping him. Point blank, period. That's the facts. Do you feel like that the sons can end up being co-conspirators? Oh, yeah. So uh, the one who be rapping, he call himself King Combs. Uh, he, faces yeah. several, he, he faces several lawsuits right now for some of the same activity. But the thing is, he wasn't old enough to be in a lot of that older footage and older allegations that his father have stacked up. So he didn't been he 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 been on my radar for a minute because he liked to grope females, look underneath their dress without their permission and stuff like that. So you know, don't be surprised if he end up getting charged. But he's under several lawsuits as well for sexual assault. And where did he learn that shit from? He learned it from his pops. And just like Dapper Dan said in the interview, you know, what's going on with Puff right now didn't start with him. You feel me? Dapper Dan said, I was friends with his parents. You know, they they knew about this type of activity a long time ago. So this ain't nothing new. Now, um, I want to ask you. Now, we know the Houston lawyer picked up a hundreds of uh, uh, civil lawsuits against Diddy. Uh, you just mentioned that the son has civil lawsuits against him also. Is yep. it is it any way that Diddy can protect the family's dynasty? No, it, it's too late for that. Right now, he has to avoid getting Epstein, which means murdered in jail. That's why he's trying to change his jail facility right now. And he has to do his best to avoid a life sentence. So that's what he's working on. Because they say allegedly some of the baby oil bottles tested positive for liquid GHB. Yeah. Now, if we do the math on that, a thousand bottles of baby oil, that's like 50 plus pounds of GHB. That's an automatic life sentence. Outside of all of the other stuff that they got him on charges with. So, uh, um, so basically, what you're saying is, financially, is over with for for the for the for the Combs dynasty. I'm not gonna say financially because you know he one of the investors who helped purchase Twitter, which is now X. Ah. And then he sold Revolt TV to a buddy of his, which is being held in the parent company, so he still get that income. He, he won the lawsuit against Diageo, the company who owned uh, Ciroc. So once he challenged them and tried to sue them, that's what set off these chain of events. Yeah. So once I seen he sold Revolt, that let me know that he knew his time was coming. And then, you know, it's all the powerful guys do. They start passing off assets. Yeah. Same thing Gucci Man did with his artists when he went down. You feel me? He passed them off to... Uh, the guy, Lior Cohen, at uh, 300 Entertainment to hold those contracts until he got back home. Same stuff. Hmm. That's a good point of view right there. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. All right. So, also, big homie, man, it's uh, it's rumors floating around Atlanta saying that Young Thug possibly could reach a plea deal that can end the trial. They're saying it's in works. And Young Thug might be free. No, go ahead. You be on you. You be doing your research. You a real <laughs> junk, you a real journalist out here, man. Uh, first and foremost, I want to salute Swift D for uh, actually doing his homework. Well, a lot of times people interview me, they look to me to 
answer stuff without them doing their homework. So like, I want to salute you for that. You know, shout out Split D Media. Appreciate now, it. Now, when it comes to this situation, once they had to change the judge for being biased and then change to the current judge, and then you see videos with a new judge, uh, the white woman, I forget her name, she's reading the prosecutors the riot act. You see what I'm saying? Telling them they're unprepared, say they're wasting her time, stuff like that. And then Fannie Willis made a mistake by going out to Donald Trump. So once she went out to Trump, a lot of her dirty laundry got aired out. So what we're seeing now is they're trying to save face. So today, one of his co-defendants uh, reached a plea agreement for 20 years. He only had to do seven years in prison. And if you look at the young thug's face, he's upset about that. So I can verify that there are plea, plea agreements on the table. They have been offered. Uh, do I think he's going to just come home with no time? I don't. But their original plan to get him a life sentence, that's over with. Uh, Thug, Thug will be, he'll be coming home eventually. And you got to look at the facts. The only person who did not cop a plea and agree to testify against him was his op, YFN Lucci. So is that, that isn't that ironic? It's just crazy, bro. The streets, the streets is proven that they don't love anybody for sure. You know, one thing this trial exposed, it was trying to expose the YSL, uh, uh, alleged, uh, the YSL criminal uh, enterprise, but really it exposed Fanny and her overzealous uh, 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 prosec uh, case, uh, you know, prosecuting this case. For sure. Um, For sure. I think, I think, I think really, I think she was. I think she used. I think she was going to use Young Thug as a booster to for shoot for a bigger political role. Definitely, you're 100 percent correct. Uh, she wanted to follow the Kamala Harris blueprint. They the same complexion. They're similar in age. They had the same position as a prosecutor, and she knew in order for her to run to be a presidential candidate or to go go to be a senator after this. She had to get a big name. She had to stack up some big cases. And this case has not been picked up federally. This is a state case. And people beat the state all the time. So we're probably going to witness a situation where uh, he either comes home scot-free or he pleads out. He does a little time. He'll be back. Now, what do you think is going to be the, the end game for Fanny? Cause she she definitely failed. She definitely failed. So the opportunity for her to be a, a presidential candidate that's over. That's over. Uh, she'll probably try to become a senator or like a mayor or something like that. It's definitely gonna be back to the drawing board for her for sure. Definitely back to the drawing board for sure. Uh, they used a lot of weird tactics. And shout out to Brian Steele, Thug's lawyer, for being able to expose such things. And Whenever you see a judge hold a lawyer with such esteem and contempt and then ended up locking him up in the same cell as his client, you know it's a shit show now. No, definitely, definitely. Uh, do you think this this could be the end of, because she first started off before the, before the YSL Rico, she she's the one that went went out the uh and he's still and he's still incarcerated right now. Uh uh not not drug not not drug uh not drug wish peso. Uh the um you know what I'm talking about. The oh, Lucci? Not Lucci. The one the one that was getting robbed all the time. Oh uh Pablo Juan. Pablo Juan, hood rich Pablo Juan. All right. So I think that was really her first Rico case that she went after. Yeah, that was her first case for sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, getting the drug rich guys off the street was her first case. She succeeded in that. She yeah, she did succeed. Now, sure. uh, all right. So she had some successful cases. Do you think that this could be uh, the end? Uh, if because based this is why I said cases failed. Do you think that this is the end of 
her prosecution office going after these these Atlanta cliques? I definitely feel like she's going to have to pivot from this and then go into the human trafficking world and try to go after people like that simply because, you know, she made Donald Trump an enemy of hers. And if he wins this election, he's going to be after her like we never seen before. Whoa. 